Hey, Adam Colbertson here. Before we begin, we got a promo from another independent podcast, so when you finish this episode, make sure you go and check them out. Hello, you magnificent podcast listeners out there. I'm James, the producer and GM for the Dimension Door podcast. If you're interested in listening to a mercenary... While they're trying to figure out who he is, I kind of walk over and try to shake him to wake him up. Hey, wake up. A wise woman. Do not touch my patient, sir. You typically do not shake a man near death. A doctor... Is he wearing glasses? Because if he's not wearing glasses, I could slap him, see if I could wake him up. But I wouldn't hit a guy with glasses. And a nurse. Well, it's almost like this uh, this poor deer here uh, got stuck in some snow or something. He's got some coldness going on in his nose and his ears. Work together to figure out the mystery of a snowstorm in the midst of summer. Check us out. If that doesn't sound interesting enough, what if I told you that one of them permanently shrinks 10 inches in the first episode? Two of them are bipedal rats, and one of them is literally a witch. We have an award-winning sound designer, a written adaptation of every episode, and a ton of fun. If any of that sounds interesting, check us out as we play through Paizo's Pathfinder Reign of Winter campaign. You can find us at DimensionDoorPodcast.com, on Twitter at DimensionPod, or anywhere you listen to podcasts. Steal your mind. For eldritch horrors of the universe unknown. For what is to follow is a tale of intrigue, mystery, and madness. You're listening to Microphones and Monsters. Manrose? Oh. Alistair. Hello, Alistair. Manrose, what happened here? I was ambushed. By? Some wrappings. Hmm. So Victor is behind this. (laughs) (laughs) Victor has the wrappings too No, I I was kidding I don't think I actually knew or cared That Victor had wrappings I don't know about the wrappings I think he probably don't Wow No, he's um, (laughs) I'm the only one he told, I think Well, they they, I I yelled about them during the fight uh, But maybe Alistair just didn't uh, pay attention to That sounds like something Alistair would do though That sounds exactly accurate yeah. Let's go with that. <laughs> okay, so say. I was hoping he was disgorged on potato wedges. <laughs> you didn't have time to. You were gonna make him stupid. for him for dinner. You didn't get a chance to make him potato wedges yet. I know. Yeah. And now he's dead. That's the epilogue. <laughs> he's not dead yet. He's about to die in my arms. Well, if I had <laughs> must, arms. Must have been something you said. <laughs> He's about to die in your mage hand. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Yes, wrappings. Um, they, uh, they were inside of the, the lab. Um, something called the elevator down to the lab. And, and uh, these wrappings it attacked me and forced me to come back up here and gather this uh, yellow gentleman and uh, somehow combined with him and they took my key and went to the the seal room the seal room where is that 
the that big expensive white room I see and when I don't have the key it I default to here so I take it that the key is needed to get there well I do have a backup key but it is has limited uses and he didn't know about that and how many uses does it have you mean we didn't know about that it has three uses. See. But once the three are used, the key disappears. And how long ago was this? Oh, maybe a half an hour to an hour. I, I kind of lost track of time. I imagine if it was insanely pressing, it probably would be too late by now. Perhaps I should wait for the others. They should be here shortly. We're going to go to Julian, because y'all were kind of running together and uh, split off whenever you got to the clinic. And the uh, and and Victor, Barum, and Gimbal continue on to the DDA. Um, so Julian and Chandira, you're at the clinic. Doors open. You go in, and nobody is in the lobby. Okay. But you see a trail of blood that goes down the hallway to one of the back rooms. Oh, no. Um, I'm going to um, I, I, I not speak, but kind of like motion to um, Chandir to kind of like search the... Um, uh, search the lobby, and then I'm going to go into the back room. Okay. Um, and it is the, the morgue, mm-hmm. or the, is that what it's called? The morgue uh, is where you keep yeah. the bodies. Yeah, it'd be, it'd be basically for yeah. all intents and purposes, it'd be where the morgue was as well. Yeah, so it, it is back there. So you okay. going in there? Yeah, I'm following the trail. All right, so you see two crazed crypt folk, and they are trying to get into one of the the body drawers okay um i am going to cast gonna cast a uh, acid arrow at one of them okay so let me go ahead and roll that does a 18 hit 18 hits okay Damage is uh, 4d4 plus, I think it's 5. I'll roll it for a second. Because I have the alchemical um, savant. It's plus 4 to the roll. Um, So that's 15 acid damage. All right. So how, how, how how does your acid arrow work? Uh, so, uh, just like um, uh, uh, we were wrapping about before, um, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to k- change out the cartridge on the bottom, and I'm going to put um, a green bubbly vial into it. It's not acid. It's inert. But as soon as I fire into it, it reacts and becomes acidic. Okay. But this is not like a like a, like a a hard vial. Like This is more like a... Um, water balloon kind of like a water balloon yeah <laughs> nice <laughs> basically it is it is it is a it is a kind of water balloon as it were and as soon as it hits it you know pops and then immediately starts eating away at anything it's been covered on okay. oh, a paintball all right so <laughs> yeah yeah so it it it's it hits it and just splashes all over its body and and uh you just see it starting to just to eating away at the at the the skin and then the muscle and then the the organs and, and bones um and he just like where i'm guessing you hit it center, center mass oh yeah so um it, it it's just eating through enough and he's he's like trying to turn around um but before he can like turn around and, and react or anything like that his his body just like his spine um, is so brittle that it just snaps in half, and he's, he's in two parts now. 
and okay. he's dead. And and I'm like no hesitation, like dragging the lightning. I haven't fired the lightning gun yet, but I'm like you know training the lightning gun over to the other ghoul. Okay, you going for an attack with that? Uh, if I have enough time, yes. Uh, was is the the acid arrow? Is that a bonus action or a main no, it's action? A, it's a spell. He is going to go for an attack on you. Okay. I think this is the first time that one of those things has gotten an attack on us. So yes. You shouldn't feel shouldn't feel bad about that. Well, I've got some feelings about all of this. What you do? Dude was like all ready to go. And then she's like, mm. So he's going in for a for a bite, actually. Like he's not leaping surprising. towards you. Leaping towards you and, and, and trying to bite you at your neck. I protect your neck. That's a ten. Ten does not hit. Alright, so he he uh he's leaping towards you and just for fucking coolness, he you, you dodge out of the way and, and he goes uh, further than he was intending and, and kinda hits the ground and 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 rolls to like in a position standing up. Okay. So like as he's kind of stumbling up, I'm going to go ahead and uh, fire the lightning gun at him. All right. Yeah. Roll it. Uh, it's been a while since I rolled this. So it should be... A lot. Yeah. I just... I can't... <laughs> I, can't I can't remember exactly how to roll it, so I roll it as um, a spell attack, right? Yeah. Okay. So... Uh, plus uh, spelled attack to your attack proficiency. Yeah. Oh no, it, no, I'm not, it, I'm not proficient with it, right? Because I have to be. Wasn't oh yeah, yeah, yeah. For it, yeah, I'm not, I don't. I have my proficiency bonus to it. it. It works like a spell, though. That's a natural twenty. Oh wow! Yeah, that hits. I'm not going to. How That's does, max how damage. Does a, yeah, as I was gonna say, how does a max damage roll work on this thing? Uh, how many were you using all your charges or no, no, the max just amount? One, just one. Just charge. one charge. Okay. Um, so it's uh, how much is the it's the usually, damage on it's, the gun? It's D10 lightning. Okay, so you're doing D10 damage to it. Yeah. So would that be plus two D10? your plus your your magic plus uh, the plus your spell modifier, modifier? So that'd be four. Okay. All right. So you. Um, it, I mean, you rolled a nat twenty too. So, <laughs> like you, I've never critted you, on this weapon before, so I'm like, I don't know what happens. So you, as he leaps for you and you dodge out of the way, like you just follow him with the lightning gun as you're as you're dodging and, and turning around towards him, and you just you just and, and the lightning comes out and he just he just fills him and he's just like twitching, 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 and and and. As the as the lightning's just all going through him and, and he just explodes all over the room. Like there's there's not even chunks of bone, like you liquefied his insides. <laughs> I you liquefied like a, his entire body. I have like this really harsh, like like baring my teeth, like hate hate hateful look on my face as I'm doing it. <laughs> as as uh just goo sp- Splashes you, like splatters all over your face and all over the room. Mm-hmm. It's warm. It's really warm. <laughs> mm. <laughs> I bet. Um, and then um, I'm assuming at some point Chantier's gonna turn around the corner and see what the fuck's going on. Um, uh, you, you, no, she doesn't. Uh, but you do hear off on the other side of the uh, clinic. You do hear ba ba ba. Ba, ba, ba. Like you, you hear gunshots. Okay, I'm gonna immediately go over to where the ghouls were trying to claw and see what's inside of the uh, see what's inside of one of the um, the freezers. Yeah, uh, you open it up and uh, Gerbo's in there, just just cowering. All right, come on, Gerbo, we have to go now. Oh, hey, doctor. No, uh, no time to talk. And I just I grab him, like. <laughs> by his waist and like I'm carrying him and then I'm like moving towards the exit okay okay just open up the like cooler like come with me if you want to leave it's basically yes <laughs> except I'm covered in liquefied former ghoul 
<laughs> so as you get out, so you look like I'm in commando. <laughs> yes, commando especially. <laughs> nice. As you get out into the lobby, you see the door uh, was broken in, and there is a you see a ghoul uh, kneeling over Chandira, and he looks up at you, and, and there's blood all over his his mouth. All right, I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna uh, pop him too. All with right, the lightning gun. I'm I'm, I'm, um, okay. I'm gonna pop you one. Yeah, so I already <laughs> spit one charge. So I've got um, after to do this, I've got 18 left. So let's roll again. God, I'm hitting it like crazy. Uh, that is a 22 to hit. I rolled okay, that hits. Yeah. Uh, all right, damage. Uh, I'm only gonna use uh, one charge. Uh, that is 13 lightning damage. All right. So as you, as you shock him with the gun, he, he, um, the crypt folk, uh, gets shocked. Like he's, he's twitching everything. But as, as the lightning ends, um, he falls down on top of Chandira and he's just like smoking. Okay. Smoking. Smoking. Um, I'm going to put Gerber down for a little bit and then walk over to Chandir and then kick off the uh, the smoking uh, ghoul uh, corpse. Alright, um, and you see Chandira laying there and uh, she's unconscious and she just got her arm bit off. Oh god. Oh. Um, Gerbo, are you in any way to do um, some triage? Oh, yeah. Yeah, doctor. We have a, a uh, amputated arm. I need it. Um, I need a tourniquet. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I'm on it. And he, he pulls out. He's got a little, his little kid on him. Mm-hmm. His little pouch blocks off the arm. Mm-hmm. You know, tightens, tightens it up. Tightens it up and and uh, patches up the the nub the that's nub, left. As it were. Okay. Yeah. All right. It's well, like, what are you What are you doing while he's doing that? Uh, I'm looking at the door and making sure none of the other ghouls are kind of stuffed through or something, kind of like at an overwatch position. She's not she's not breathing, doctor. I'm going to see if I can fiddle in one of my pockets and see if I can pull out uh, one of the potions I have. I think I've got, like, at least one or two left. Okay. I've got one left. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and give uh, give that person to Gerber. Gerber, give her one of these. Now what's the what's the role for it? Is it's just a regular healing potion. So it's uh was it one D four plus four? One D four plus four? Yeah, do you Is want me right? to roll it? I can roll it. Yeah, uh, you gave it to me. It's it's two D four plus two, sorry. And I had two potions. I only have one left now. I just looked at in my inventory. Alright. She gets uh, right, six six HP back. That's there better aren't than any potions at the clinic? I'm not taking the time to look for any. This is definitely a, a smash and grab kind of thing. All right, and she, she's just like, oh, oh, my, my arm, my, my arm. What, what? Where's my arm? I'm gonna look over at the smoking ghoul, and I'm like, I, I think he ate it. Um, that wasn't your shooting arm, was it? Yeah. Uh, well, we'll figure it out later. You're gonna lose a lot more if we stick around at this place. We need to hit, we need to get back to the DDA. Yeah, she she just she just kind of snaps out of it, and she's she pops back up on her feet with her with her other arm, uh, pushing her up, and she's like, "All right, let me get my gun." And she picks it up. Is the arm is like the arm still like is like a nub of the hand still on the gun? No, no, <laughs> no. Okay. <laughs> but uh, uh, she just she just pulls the the hammer back on. With, with her with her non-dominant arm and arm, she's like, "All right, I'm, I'm, okay, I'm gonna I'm do gonna with what need, I got. I'm gonna still looking out the door because I'm like I'm not letting anything cross the threshold, uh, goal wise. I'm gonna kneel down, and like, Gerbo, reach in my pack and pull out the crossbow. You need a weapon too. All right, doctor. And he, he, I he gets have, it. I should have my old crossbow in there, and I'll go ahead and give it to it. Pull out any bolts you need." I was doing pretty good in a game earlier with this, with one of these. <laughs> well, we're gonna need that practice right now. All right. Hopefully he's got those flash bolts too from the Kimberlin bracket. Yes. 
Uh, I'm actually not going to mention that. If he grabs him out of the bag, he grabs him out of the bag. So, hold on. So he's gonna he's gonna Adam. reach in and grab some random bolts, heads if um if they're the 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 flash bolts, the blinding bolts. All right. And it's heads. Ooh. So yeah, you you what you you see him grab the the blind the the flash bolts and and he's just like, all right, doctor, let's go. Okay. All right. Um. All right. We need to make our way to the DDA. Um. Are you guys ready to go? We're not. This is we're not stopping. We got to book it over there. Chandir is already heading for the door. Okay. So we're all, all right. We're making our break for it. All right. I'm right there with you, doctor. Okay. This is like serious Left for Dead vibes to it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I love it. All right. Um, Victor arrives at the DDA before Julian and, and company. Um, or did I say yeah, Victor? Yeah, okay. Yeah, um, yeah, Victor's the second to arrive. So you see Alistair, you see Luth, you see Brackett, and you see Alistair talking to Manrose, who's laying in the elevator. Luth, what are you doing here? <laughs> <laughs> I was I was checking out a house and and came across this cat and he just meowed at me, but I mean he's pretty cool. He was he was blasting blasting all over the place. It was it was pretty awesome. And and this is this is Brackett. He's uh he's a weaponsmith and I I've met Brackett. Some poor um, guy's in the elevator, he seems to be hurt. What? Alistair, what's going on? Well, it seems that um, something that was transported into the lab had some of the wrappings, it seems, from the Tattered King with it, and uh, it seemed to come up and assault Manrose, and combine with Dalton, who then stole the key and went to the White Room. That's not good. No, no, I would agree, it is not good. Where is Julian? Uh, he stopped by the clinic to pick up Gerbo. Uh, he and Chandira uh, should be here any moment. I brought uh, Sheriff Barham and, and Gimbal. Okay. Manrose has another key, which is of limited uses. I think because of the limit to the use, we need to make sure that all three of us use it to go to the White Room together. No, that, that sounds like a plan. No, you um, misunderstood where are we gonna me, drop all these other Alistair. People? You misunderstood me, Alistair. You can go to three different floors. All three of you can travel to... All of you can travel together. All of your friends that you have acquired and brought here. Oh, I see. Even still, it is best that we do so when everyone is here. Yeah, they should be right behind us. Uh, the clinic's not far from here. Um, I just suppose that it would be too much trouble to have someone or possibly if we have time to maybe check one more place what place is that uh just a general store not too far from here i mean if it's not very far i mean we can we can try but um uh, i don't know how much time we have agreed uh bracket speaks up he's like do we need to save anybody else Yes, tell him that uh, there are a family of yak folk at a nearby general store that we need to try and check on. Uh, yeah, there's a there's a family of yak folk that have a general store nearby. The Stout Hearts? Is confirmed. Yes. Yeah, yeah, that's it. Yeah, they're not they're not that far from here. We can we can probably get in there. You have my hammer. And my ox. <laughs> <laughs> All right, then let's go. All right, who's going? Well, I'm scampering off, and anybody who's following me can. All right, Bracket is following the cat. Um, Luth is like, I, oh, I'll wait here. You said, uh, you said your buddy's coming with uh, a yeah, with a Gerbo. Yeah. Yeah, the the doctor, the one that was fighting with us at, at my home, um, he's coming with uh, the deputy and 
and uh, and his nurse. All right, well, I'll, I'll tell them y'all went to go see the Stout Hearts, and, and you'll be right back. Thanks, Luth. Um, where is Gimbal going to stay? Gimbal can stay with us. Oh. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to hold down the fort here, okay? <laughs> Thanks, Gimbal. And then I'll, and he, he pulls I'll, out he pulls out like a crossbow and, and a and a and like a sawed off shotgun. He's like, I'm ready to go. And the sheriff is gonna stay too. Um, or is the sheriff coming with us to help? There's so many characters. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we've never had this many char- key characters in one scene. <laughs> it's like we have we have Richard and Max and Steven and Adam and Adam and Adam and Adam, Adam and Adam. And Adam. <laughs> and Bar- Barum goes, uh, you think you need any more firepower? Um, I think we should leave that Probably to his discretion. Not. I mean, we do How want to make sure that I'm enough are here to be able to point. protect them. Because when, shortly after Victor al- arrived is when you started getting into fighting at the clinic. Clinic, okay. So you would arrive after they leave. I think me and Alistair and Brackett can probably handle what, whatever's happening at the general store, right. if, if anything, and that the sheriff and Gimbal and Luth can hold down the fort at the DDA. I think that should be the... I think they're going to be just fine way. then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and, and at least two, two player characters will be in the same spot for five minutes. <laughs> <laughs> Funny, well, that. Uh, I'll hold down the fort here with Gimbal. We won't, we won't let this place be overrun. Thanks, Sheriff. You know, honestly, I feel sorry for any crypt folk who won- uh, wander upon that place. <laughs> Victor, Let's you would go. be the only one that understands him. <laughs> <laughs> That's not important to translate. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so y'all, y'all take off. Uh, Julian and and company arrive after. Y'all are already out of sight, um, heading towards the Stout Hearts General Store and Taylor. Where the hell and is Taylor? Everyone? Oh, yeah. Um, they went to go get the, the Stout Hearts at the General Store. The Yak Folk? Yeah, yeah, the Yak Folk. Uh, okay. Wait, do I know that they're Yak Folk? I don't think I've actually had any interaction with them. You haven't. The only one who has is Alistair. Okay. Yeah, I haven't had an interaction with him. Okay, so maybe Alistair mentioned it because Alistair. <laughs> oh yeah, Alistair. So Alistair has casual about. conversation, <laughs> <laughs> especially us. Uh, the, the, the general store. Uh, 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 okay. Um, Supply run. And I'm gonna look inside and kind of see the situation. Yeah, you see uh, Manros on the on the floor. Oh shit, Manrose of the elevator. Oh, hello, Julian. Uh, is he still bleeding? He's not bleeding. He was never bleeding. Okay, he's um, just, just like uh, just basically got that shit knocked out of him. He's injured and and on the floor. Um, like he he, he seems to be injured. Okay, Greg, bro, can you uh, help me over here with um? With, with Manros. Uh, Gerbo, this is Manros. Manros Gerbo. Uh, former, not, former assistant at the, uh, the the clinic. Oh, hello, Gerbo. Um, it's a pleasure to meet you. I wish it was under better circumstances. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, wh- what's wrong with you? I'm afraid that any of your medicine will not help me. Oh, well, doctor, like what? I don't know what to do. Is, is this like a man, man, and I'm just going to lean into man, is this like a religious thing because like now's not the time <laughs> oh, oh no uh, the injuries that I've suffered are not physical they are normal magic cannot magic and and medicine cannot cannot help me uh, if, if the time is there only time will help but yeah, as I, he, he, he gives you the spiel on, on, uh, the key situation, uh, the raps attacking him in the, in the, uh, from the lab meeting up to main floor combine or like, like combines with Dalton Renfield and he goes to the white room and the elevator without the key, uh, defaulted to the main floor and open. 
and he has the uh, spare key that only has three uses left. Okay. Shit. All right. I, I, I think it's best that we just wait for everyone to get here. I don't... As much as I want to stick it to that yellow bastard, I, I think it's best we need to wait for uh, the, the whole team, as it were. I guess... Yes. Uh, we I think that to... was Alistair's plan as well. Oh, yeah, uh, that definitely sounds like him. He seemed really disturbed and, and wanted to go help out his friends at the general store. Well, that doesn't sound like him at all. <laughs> he was he. I've never seen him move so fast. It's almost like you were never my friends. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I don't know about that moving fast bit, but I'll I'll have to take your word on the rest of it. The only thing I, the only time I've seen him move fast is from floor to bed or pillow. <laughs> <laughs> all right, oh. all right uh, then I'll, I guess I'll I'll go ahead and take a short rest while I'm here and wait for all the right. guys to get back. Okay, um, back to Alistair and Victor, um, and Bracket. You guys arrive at the general store, and yeah, uh, you can you can go in. How how you how you going in? I'm gonna go in through the cat door. Okay, <laughs> and there's a <laughs> ding ding ding, <laughs> <laughs> little little jingle bell. And I suppose that I'll go in the normal door, and Bracket will go in the giant. <laughs> <laughs> the normal door is giant. Because yeah. they're yak folk. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so we'll just go in, right in there. As soon as as soon as Alistair gets in and, and you start opening the door and that that bell goes off, uh, you hear, hey, "Alistair, be careful!" <laughs> <laughs> there it is. There it is. <laughs> Hello, Alistair here. I suppose everybody can just calm down now. See, Manrose is not actually dead, at least not yet. That very well may be coming. I know I'm evil, aren't I? But at least you have a little time to say goodbye. What I'm curious of is, will anybody be as tense about what happens with the Start Hearts? I mean, they seem to be in danger. We wouldn't want anything to happen to them, would we? I know I don't. I mean, they're among the very few people I actually like in this world. I mean, I don't know if I would go so far as saying that they're my friends, but they're maybe the closest thing I have. Oh, and poor, poor Chandira, down one arm. And her better arm at that. Perhaps Julian should not have left her alone. I think the blame should fall squarely on his shoulders. I wonder if the sheriff and Gimbal will be okay holding everything off. I mean, obviously we don't want anything to happen to Manrose while we're gone. I don't really want to hear all of the complaints about having him die on us. Especially if it might be possibly considered my fault, which it certainly is not. I know one thing. This Dalton character has become really a thorn in all of our sides. And I will be very happy to see him done. I'm sure that you, our lovely listeners, probably feel much the same way. After all, he maimed one of your favorites. Well, I suppose not him per se, but him now, since they are now merged. I think that should be close enough. He apparently had some kind of plan involved the whole time, or else he wouldn't have shown up. But one thing is for certain, at least we can look forward to some type of closure, as all of this seems to be coming to a head. If you have any thoughts about what might be going on, or particular feelings about this episode, or previous episodes, you should go and make some comments, leave some reviews, and let us know. We'd always be happy to hear from you. You can always reach us through our social media. Uh, links to those and all of our episodes can be found at microphonesandmonsters.com. 
And as always, all of our music is written and produced by Marco Mazzi of Fallen Highway Studios. Thank you for listening, and I hope you join us next time on Microphones and Monsters.